This video is brought to you in part by Squarespace. Welcome back to Sonic Speed Reading and another laid back look at IDW Sonic. Just like after the Metal Virus, now that we've wrapped up the Imperial City arc, or I suppose it's also called the Urban Warfare arc, things calm down a little bit for the next couple issues, even though there is a bigger story that seems to be building up, but we're not gonna be talking about that today. Instead, we're gonna be focusing on Amy's trip to Angel Island because we get an interaction that surprised Surprisingly, we don't see too often, at least not in mainline Sonic, and that's Amy Rose hanging out with Knuckles. The stakes are low, but I do think any longtime fan is going to appreciate the conversations and little adventures these two get into. And knowing the shipping community, I'm sure this sparks some interest for some of you folks out there. And of course, you know how much I love Sonic 3 and Knuckles. I love any excuse to explore my favorite zones of this franchise. So like I said, we're going to focus only on that. There is is a secondary story that's happening in issue 62, but for now we're only going to focus on the two redheads. Yes, pink counts as red, shut up. This issue was written by Ian Flynn, art by Thomas Roethlisberger, colors by Leonardo Ito, Ito, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, letters by Sean Lee with editors Riley Farmer and David Mariette. If you don't recall the end of the last story, Rouge swiped an ancient echidna relic from Eggman's base. Amy spotted it, scolded the bat, and told her to hand it over, so Amy Amy herself could take it back to Knuckles. And that's where the story kicks off, as we see Amy arriving on the island. In her now iconic buggy, and I love that they actually show it hovering around here, I wonder if that makes Sonic's transformed canon. And even on her own, I love that Amy is just full of love and compliments. She's just in awe of the beauty of the island as she hovers over it. And once again, they do show clues of different zones, the most prominent being Mushroom Room Hill, but we do see plenty of ruins, some of which we'll be exploring shortly. Anyway, as Amy awkwardly lands on the island, she walks around the Master Emerald Shrine, taking note that Knuckles isn't around, so he must be on patrol. And for whatever it's worth, we can see from the soil around her that this is technically Angel Island Zone. While Amy is admiring the view, and specifically a waterfall, the ground crumbles beneath her and she goes falling into Hydro City, or Hydrocity, or Toilet Town Zone. And you're gonna notice that through this issue, they cleverly take you through Sonic 3's opening zones in order. I also love how casually she's falling into this zone as well, still talking to herself. At this point, Amy is a well-seasoned adventurer on her own terms. And it is fun to take note of those differences after I just got done looking at Amy's anniversary comic. But yeah, back to Toilet Town. As Amy is falling, she's quickly swooped up by Knuckles. I'm noticing this is becoming a character trope for him as well, just curtly saying the character's name as he saves them. As they land, Amy explains her purpose for visiting the island, showing off the relic, and the stoic expression of Knuckles immediately changes. As most Sonic fans probably already know, he is a treasure hunter and he's very invested in the history of his island and, more specifically, of his people. He is the last echidna, after all. And I love this little panel of him touching heads with the relic. These are the last connections he has with his people, so obviously this is incredibly precious to him. And while Knuckles has always been friendly enough with Amy, you can tell that he is incredibly grateful, and he warms up immediately and does something he doesn't normally do, and asks if the Pink Hedgehog would like to join him while he returns it to its proper place. And this is what makes these little adventures so fun for me, because Amy is already asking the questions I would be asking, and giving little context clues to how efficient Knuckles is on his island. She's surprised and asks if he already knows where the relic goes, and he responds saying he's pretty sure, pointing out the color and carving style of the stone, which again, looks like a low poly model from Sonic Adventure. I love that. Anyway, he says that he has seen this style in both the Mystic Ruins and in Marble Garden. And once again, little details there, because one of those places is in Sonic Adventure and the other is in Sonic 3, both of which had ancient echidna bits in them. Well, actually, just one specifically, but I will get to that. I love that Amy carefully looks over the statue, but has no idea what he's talking about, so just trusts his judgment, and they carry on with their adventure. Shortly thereafter, Knuckles opens up a trap door, and I just want to point this out specifically. I don't know if this is any kind of a reference. It could just be me being nostalgic, but you might recall I covered the introduction to Knuckles in the Archie story 
stories, and in that he had a very similar trapdoor. A lot of early Archie had very simple designs like that. I don't think they've had anything specifically like this from the games itself, and it looks a little out of place compared to the rest of the structural design of the island. So it could be a very quick little nod to early Archie. It could just be a simple coincidence, but it is one of those things that either way made me smile. And I just wanted to share that. And I also love this point here. This again is why I love Ian Flynn, especially when it comes to Knuckles, because he's noticing things that I noticed as well as a kid when playing the game. It's something I mentioned in my Sonic 3 and Knuckles videos. Amy points out that Knuckles never once made a detour their entire way through Hydro City, Hydro City Toilet Town, saying that he really knows his way around the island. And Knuckles says, yeah, he spent his whole life here and he's got a lot of free time on his hands. And again, another little detail, as Amy is picking herself up out of the hole, a cylinder actually lifts her up to the surface. One of the same spinning cylinders from Hydro City, a lovely little detail. But as she's lifted into Marble Garden, the zone around them begins to shake, also like it does in Sonic 3. Nervously, Amy says that one was not her fault. Knuckles says, no, the whole region is pretty unstable. Ruins are being buried and unearthed all the time. Love that little detail. And of course, he also points out that Eggman digging around is also a cause for all the commotion. He's not there currently, but everything he's done in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and again in 2022's Free Comic Book Day, all that meddling has not helped things around here at all. Amy mentions that Jewel would probably be happy to send some folks from a restoration to help keep watch around the island. And Knuckles asks, who's Jewel? And fair enough, Knuckles has not interacted with a whole lot of the comic characters up to this point. And Knuckles, once again, gives a hard pass. I know this is a sticking point for Ian, so I do love that he does ask this specific question anytime he gets a chance. He did the same with Blaze in last year's annual. And you see that frustration reflected in Amy asking, why doesn't anybody else protect the island in Knuckles' absence? And Knuckles says that you just have to keep an eye on more people on top of the island. Just makes things complicated. And Amy retorts that they'd be trustworthy. And Knuckles says he trusts her and like five others maximum. And I do love that Amy catches that casual little compliment. I think that's so unbelievably sweet. If you know the history of Knuckles and everything about him, that's a big deal for his character. And it also says a lot about Amy's character as well. So much love, so much empathy, you can't help but like her. I mean, she could warm the heart of Shadow, then certainly Knuckles was gonna warm up to her as well. But another thing I wanted to quickly point out, while there are no rings, which again is driving me insane, they do have the pulley lever from Sonic 3, and it is colored like a ring. If you played the original game, then you know that the pulley is blue. So, crazy conspiracy mode, just for a quick second, did they sneakily put a ring into IDW Sonic? Is this the first time we see a ring in this entire book? 62 issues in? I'm gonna take it as a win. This little tiny book is full of little details, I'm telling you. Anyway, sorry for yet another tangent. I told you, I love Angel Island. Amy follows up being happy about the compliment, but also asking, does that mean Knuckles trusted her to pick up the slack just as the resistance ended. If you've been reading the comic for a long time, then you know that Flynn quickly shifted around the roles. Got Knuckles out of that general role from Sonic Forces and got him back to Angel Island and put Amy in his place to head up not the resistance, but the restoration now that the war with Eggman was over. And she is being a little passive aggressive about it. She is being a little snarky, but she is more than justified. He did leave her with a lot of work. And the stoic echidna begins to sweat, feeling a bit nervous, saying, would it be a compliment or rude if I said yes? But Amy gives him a quick playful slug and a wink, telling him to relax. She was happy to help, she just wished she had a little more time to prep. And Knuckles gives her a genuine apology, and Amy says, hey, you saved me from falling to my doom, even though he really didn't, she was about to fall into a slide. But all the same, she says that they are even. And I love these two little panels because it did make me realize this is probably the first time Amy and Knuckles got to properly talk about this. They met back up incredibly briefly on Angel Island during the third act of the Metal Virus, but obviously they didn't really have time to chat. And it's a comic like this, where things are chill and the stakes are low, where they can properly address
address little things of this nature. And I love that attention to detail to their own stories. But yeah, moving on, they find themselves in front of a cave. While Amy is ready to just head on into the next adventure, Knuckles holds her back, seeing that there's an active trap inside. He keeps these traps working to stop thieves, and obviously being ancient relics, he doesn't want to damage them either. So that does explain a little bit of why Marble Garden works the way it does. And again, sorry for yet another tangent, I want you to take note of the trap itself, looking very similar to the ones that you do see in Marble Garden, but also at its base, we see a matching echidna relic to the one the pair have, and an empty base that's obviously there for the missing relic. Before we go any further, we're going to do a little bit of Angel Island archaeology and ponder on a couple of things here. This is something I have wondered for a long time. I'd say since I played Sonic Adventure, and I don't know why I haven't brought it up on the channel before, but I always found it weird that there were traps with human faces on Angel Island, those being most prominently in Marble Garden Zone. Clearly, these Echidna relics, the same that we found in Sonic Adventure, work in tandem with these human face traps. So that makes me wonder, did cultures intertwine at some point? That's not entirely impossible. Remember that the Chows and Chaos are now, after Sonic Frontiers, confirmed to be a separate culture to the Echidnas, which we never had any explanation as to why such radically differently looking critters ever interacted. Maybe something similar happened here. Maybe there were two warring cultures. Maybe some tribes found peace at some point. Maybe the Echidnas weren't always a warring culture. I think I read that somewhere at some point. But there is a lot to pick apart there in just that single panel. And I absolutely love that because it's pulling from the entire history of the series. And clearly Flynn has had a lot of fun working with Sonic Team in terms of unearthing these questions and bringing new answers to light. That's a lot of fun. And yes, that's mostly why I wanted to talk about this comic separately from everything else. I'm sorry it's not that great of a summary, but it got my geek juices flowing. And it's only further confirmed that these work in tandem with each other, because after Amy and Knuckles have a bit of a back and forth figuring out how to best handle the trap, Amy uses her Pico Hammer to ward off the face's onslaught of arrows, while Knuckles closes the gap and returns the relic to its proper resting place. And while the two fist bump, Amy says that it looks like the face was just cranky about its missing relic. Once again, I think this was all meant to work together. But just then, the ground once again crumbles beneath the two. Amy just looks irritated while Knuckles smirks as they fall. And the two friends grab each other's hands while Knuckles glides them to safety while Amy wards away oncoming rocks, saying that the relics should be extra safe now that they're lacking a floor. And then asks Knuckles if he grew up like this in this dangerous environment. Knuckles says that it made him who he is today. And A.B., grabbing his mitt, says that if he ever needs a break, he's always welcome at Restoration HQ. And Knuckles, who you'd normally expect to just give a flat no, says that he does know he's welcome, and he'll think about it. And that clearly caught him off guard. He's still not entirely used to this warmth and love from his friends. You gotta love Amy. Of course, she uses this little wiggle room in his answer to just start playing playing up HQ hardcore, saying that Jewel has everything running like clockwork, and that he'd love the initiative that Lanolin has started, to which Knuckles says, who? Again, love that little detail there, pointing out just how many characters Knuckles has not interacted with since IDW started. And the comic does use that point to jump over to Lanolin, but again, that is for another story arc. But as you can see from the runtime, even with this tiny story between Amy and Knuckles, I had a lot to talk about. But I won't keep you guys for too much longer. I hope you had as much fun on this little journey as I did. Yeah, the stakes aren't always as high as they could be, and as I've said before, I have felt the lull in a lot of months, but I suppose this hits a few of my own personal interests in the Sonic franchise. Made no secret to how much I love Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and while I don't mention it as often, my second favorite game in the series is Sonic Adventure, and the connection between those two cannot be understated. This little comic not only follows up on little bits of continuity within IDW's own story, but also gives little pieces for fans to chew on in terms of the overall lore for Angel Island. Arguably the most interesting spot in the world of Sonic the Hedgehog to this 
Tuesday. There's a lot of mysteries still worth unearthing, and while they do answer some things here and there and some bigger questions in the recent release of Sonic Frontiers, I do love that the comic, in the last couple times we visited Angel Island, does go out of its way to mention just how big this landscape is, and just how many more mysteries are left to be found. And on the interpersonal level between Knuckles and Amy, it is weird just how little we've seen some of these characters interact, even after all of this time. I did say, and this was a little bit of a critique in terms of the 900th issue, bringing back the same unchanging characters over and over again, and just mixing up which ones interact, is going to lose its luster after a while. A lot of the heftier moments emotionally in this book, and in Archie, at least the later years, had to heavily rely on the characters that came from the comics, because they are allowed to change, they are allowed to grow, they are allowed to have a bit more trauma in their past worth exploring, they're allowed to be characters, while a lot of the Sonic cast these days have to be safe and consistent mascots. Mascots that I love, make no mistake about it. And this particular critique is one I have mentioned before, but it is a hard truth when you're dealing with corporate mascots, any corporate mascots. That's why I can never be fussed with any big changes in Spider-Man or Batman or anything like that. Because no matter what they retcon, somebody else will retcon it again, and no matter how drastic of a change they make here or there, they will always revert to their default, iconic, sellable state. And that's no different with Sonic the Hedgehog, even if there are some slight changes here and there throughout the years that you may not be happy with. I certainly don't have everything I want out of the franchise, but that's okay. And we're still not at the point where these interactions have grown tired. I really love seeing Amy and Knuckles interact the way they did, and these subtle little hints in the way they speak to each other that really show the depths to these corporate mascots. And this is what I love about Flynn's writing. He's taken these simple little elements from canon games and have expanded upon them and evolved them. And while, yes, I do get a little bit tired of grapes and tarot cards and little details that they just picked up out of manuals, I am still glad that they are paying attention to those details. Before we wrap up for today, I want to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Jumping online and building up your own brand was always an intimidating thing for me, but Squarespace makes that a streamlined, fast, and easy process, all while making you look good thanks to their Fluid Engine, a next-generation website design tool that lets you tweak any of their many, many templates with easy-to-use drag-and-drop tools. And I don't need to tell you how useful websites can be, whether you want to build up a portfolio of your work, an art gallery, or a shop, because yes, they have everything you need to run your own online business, including analytics that help show you the strongest avenues of growth and help you build up marketing strategies, which include integration with your favorite social media networks. And they can even help you set up an online shop to sell and distribute custom merch. All you have to do is design it and they'll handle production, inventory, and shipping. Really doesn't get any easier than that. And to make it just a bit easier, if you use my link, squarespace.com slash game apologist, you'll get 14 days for free, which is plenty of time to see if this is right for you. And when you want to make a purchase, that same link will get you 10% off your first order. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring the video. So until next time, that's going to do it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I'm actually very surprised I had so much to talk about here. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. And an extra special thank you to these fine folks here. Kyle Winter, Cyrus the Skeptic, Joseph Duncan Sonic 2 Blue is aka Nix, Biggest Hero, John, Josh Strider, Hatsworth, Tiny Jericho, Ginger Bob, Jack of All Spades, Tristan Trap, Meekers, Dun Dun, Quote, Resident Fanboy, Miles the Prower, Jeremy Singer, Mr. Boo J, Sam Webster, Fish Flop, Lucas Lipker, The Bad Pal, Jonathan Dobbs, Haley, Chad, Is Sonic Team Making You Blue, Dimps, Leaving You Dumped, Big Red Button, Giving You a Big Red Headache, Try Sonic the Chronic, Cecil the Glade, The Dark Neon, Stefan Placonica, Three Monic, Graham J. Hall, Lenny X, Wayne is Boss, Lederick, Mr. Chupe, David, you caught me off guard so hard there. I literally thought that was Boo J, even though I've said is just sinisterly smart. You guys are getting way too good with these readouts. Jimmy Duke, STR, The Lumberjack, Trash Baphomet, Autumn from Twitter.com, or X, or whatever. Hi, Nick. Hi, Autumn. That pirate name needs a funny name. Please help. This time, the funny name is Butt Juice. Jin Sayotome, Bowden, I'm not reading that. Enerjack 5, Grayson Conagher, Spades the Nocturne, Ken K of Warheads, Ven 101, Pax 
next in Bisbee Sindarin 7, Happy Halloween-y <laughs> Twilord. Can you believe it, guys? Spider-Man 2 is just a month away. Spider-Man 2 in just a month. Woohoo, I'm so happy about that information. Paisley, Eric Delgado, Kodinsky, Sayonara, Robocop, Crimson Rose, Nix the Cobalt, Sonic P.A.J., Municent, Roxas the Cat, Godzilla, Makuta of Salt, Start by Going Bankrupt, Alexander Watson, Neil Gampa, Conan Kudo, Sharif Pai, The Lex, the most powerful ship in the two universes, Native Nerd 27, Kaido Prower, Swift Cannon, Spearmint, Omega Man 21, Pen Adelaide, Other Envelope, Jamie Torres Jr., The Phantomist, Silver Stars, Daza S, The World's Most Unironic 8.5 Tail Stand, One More Sonic Robot, Side Effects May Include anti sequelitis Impending Lawsuit Disorder, and Self-Induced Ear Trauma, MT Mecha, and Yasai. That's gonna do it for today. Thank you so much for hanging out, and I'll catch you next time. Toot toot, Sonic Warriors! Toot toot, Sonic Warriors!